Hello everyone, welcome to our journey into mindfulness. Today, we're diving deep into a transformative book, Wherever You Go, There You Are, by John Kabat-Zinn. This book has been a beacon for those curious about meditation, a lighthouse for those seeking to deepen their practice. It has been a guide, a mentor, and a companion to millions. Now let's set sail into its pages to explore how this seminal work has inspired so many to embrace the art of mindfulness. Before we jump into the book, let's talk about the author. John Kabat-Zinn may be known to many as a best-selling author, but his influence spans far beyond the written word. He's the founder of the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, a program that has brought mindfulness from the fringes into the heart of our medical and social consciousness. Kabat-Zinn's work has been instrumental in fostering a deeper understanding of mindfulness as a practice, not just a philosophy. His unique blend of scientific acumen and profound human understanding has played a pivotal role in bridging the gap between ancient wisdom and modern science. This background is essential as it informs his approach to mindfulness in the book, blending scientific insight with deep human understanding. With this in mind, we can now delve into the pages of Wherever You Go, There You Are, with a deeper appreciation for the author behind the words. Published in 1994, Wherever You Go, There You Are, breaks down the practice of mindfulness in a way that is accessible to everyone. This timeless piece by John Kabat-Zinn is a beacon of wisdom for those seeking peace and clarity in the whirlwind of our modern world. The book's structure is as inviting as its content. It is divided into a hundred brief chapters, each offering a different perspective on mindfulness, making it easy to pick up and digest at your own pace. Kabat-Zinn's writing style is simple yet profound, and his words resonate with a deep understanding of the human condition. As you journey through the pages, you'll encounter a mix of personal anecdotes, mindfulness exercises, and insights into the essence of being present. Kabat-Zinn masterfully weaves these elements together, creating a tapestry of wisdom that guides you to the heart of mindfulness. The book doesn't prescribe a rigid path, but instead encourages you to explore and find your own way. One of the book's most distinctive features is its practicality. It isn't just a theoretical treatise on mindfulness, it's a hands-on guide. Each chapter concludes with mindfulness practices that you can incorporate into your daily life, from mindful breathing to walking meditation. The book emphasizes simplicity and the importance of being present. John Kabat-Zinn masterfully crafts his chapters to illustrate these key themes, making the profound practice of mindfulness accessible to all. The book is structured into short, digestible chapters, each focusing on a different aspect of mindfulness. From you don't have to go anywhere to non-doing, each chapter ends with practical exercises that encourage readers to practice mindfulness in their everyday settings, breaking down the mystifying walls around this ancient practice. The book doesn't ask you to go on an extravagant spiritual journey or to retreat into a secluded sanctuary. Instead, it invites you to find peace and presence in the here and now. The chapter, You Don't Have to Go Anywhere, beautifully encapsulates this idea. Kabat-Zinn encourages us to understand that mindfulness is not a destination to reach, but a way of being that we can cultivate wherever we are. Another key theme in the book is the concept of non-doing. It's a fascinating idea that challenges our societal norms of relentless activity and constant busyness. Kabat-Zinn guides us to understand that mindfulness is not about doing something, it's about being. It's about being fully present, fully aware and fully engaged in this moment. It's about letting go of our constant need to do and achieve, and instead embracing the beauty of simply existing. The book also emphasizes the transformative power of mindfulness. In the chapter Transformation and Healing, Kabat-Zinn discusses how mindfulness can serve as a path to personal transformation and healing. It's a potent reminder that by being present, we can better understand ourselves, confront our pains, and nurture our well-being. The beauty of wherever you go, there you are, lies in its simplicity and practicality. Kabat-Zinn doesn't just talk about mindfulness, he shows us how to live it. Each chapter concludes with practical exercises that guide readers to integrate mindfulness into their daily life. Whether it's mindful breathing or mindful walking, the exercises are simple yet transformative, making the practice of mindfulness accessible to all. However, beyond the simplicity and practicality, the book also delves into the profound. 
Kabat-Zinn effortlessly weaves in insights from various traditions and disciplines, including Buddhism, yoga, and even science. It's a testament to the universality of mindfulness and its relevance in our modern world. In essence, wherever you go, there you are, is more than just a book on mindfulness. It's a guide to living fully and deeply. It teaches us to embrace the present, to find peace in the ordinary, and to discover the extraordinary within ourselves. Let's delve deeper into a few of these chapters to understand Kabat-Zinn's teachings on being present in the moment. In Chapter 5, Kabat-Zinn discusses non-doing, a concept that challenges our relentless activity and busy mindset. He eloquently states, Non-doing is not about being lazy or indolent, rather it's about letting things be and allowing them to unfold in their own way. Think about it. How often do we find ourselves on autopilot, rushing through tasks, chasing deadlines and constantly planning the next move? We're often so caught up in the doing that we forget about the being. Here, Kabat-Zinn invites us to pause, to engage in non-doing, and to simply be present in the moment. He further elaborates that non-doing doesn't mean we stop all physical activity. It's not about sitting still in a corner. Instead, it's about the quality of your mind. It's about shifting from a doing state to a being state. It's about being fully engaged in whatever you're doing and not thinking about the future or the past. As we delve deeper into the chapter, Kabat-Zinn offers practical ways to practice non-doing. One of my favorite exercises is the mindful moment. It's a simple yet powerful technique that can be practiced anywhere, anytime. The mindful moment exercise goes like this. Whenever you find yourself rushing or doing something mindlessly, stop for a moment. Take a deep breath. Pay attention to your breath as it goes in and out. Notice your surroundings. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? Spend a few moments just being present. You'll be surprised at how this simple exercise can bring a sense of calm and clarity. So how can we apply this concept of non-doing in our everyday life? Well, it could be as simple as savoring your morning coffee instead of gulping it down in a hurry, or listening to a friend without planning your response, or simply sitting quietly for a few minutes, observing your thoughts without judgment. These moments of non-doing are like mini meditations. They help us become more aware of our thoughts, emotions, and sensations. They allow us to experience life more fully, without the constant chatter of our minds. Another important chapter I'd like to touch on is Chapter 12, Letting Go. Kabat-Zinn writes, To let go means to give up coercing, resisting or struggling, in exchange for something more powerful and wholesome which comes out of allowing things to be as they are without getting caught up in your attraction to or rejection of them. This is a powerful concept, especially in our modern world where we're constantly striving, resisting and struggling. Kabat-Zinn urges us to let go of our preconceived notions, our judgments, and our desires for things to be different than they are. Instead, he invites us to accept things as they are, to let things unfold naturally, and to simply be present in the moment. Let's analyze this through a practical exercise, which I'll demonstrate now. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Bring to mind a situation that's causing you stress or discomfort. Instead of resisting it or trying to change it, just acknowledge it. Notice how it feels in your body. Then imagine letting it go. Imagine it floating away like a cloud in the sky. Notice how that feels. This simple exercise can help you cultivate a sense of letting go and acceptance. In conclusion, wherever you go, there you are offers us a roadmap to mindfulness. Through the concepts of non-doing and letting go, Kabat-Zinn encourages us to step out of our constant doing mode and step into being. He invites us to be fully present, to accept things as they are, and to cultivate a sense of peace and tranquility in our lives. And isn't that something we all long for? The impact of this book is widespread. It's like a pebble dropped in a pond, with ripples extending far and wide. The stories we encounter from readers all around the globe are as diverse as they are inspiring. Each one is a testimony to the transformative power of mindfulness and the profound influence of Kabat-Zinn's teachings. Take, for instance, a busy corporate executive, juggling a high-pressure job and a bustling family life. He found solace in the pages of Wherever You Go, There You Are. The book's emphasis on non-doing encouraged him to carve out moments of stillness amidst the hustle and bustle. He learned to step back, breathe and simply be. Then, there's a stay-at-home mom, overwhelmed with the constant demands of raising young children. She discovered the book at a time when she felt she was losing herself in the whirlwind of parenthood. The chapter on You Don't Have to Go Anywhere resonated with her. 
She realized that she didn't need to escape her circumstances to find peace. She could cultivate it right where she was, amidst the chaos and the noise. A college student, grappling with anxiety and the pressures of academic life, found a lifeline in Kabat-Zinn's teachings. The book's practical exercises offered her accessible ways to manage her stress levels and remain centered amidst the turbulence of university life. The chapter on mountain meditation became her go-to for grounding herself when things got overwhelming. It's not just individuals but entire communities that have been transformed by the insights in wherever you go, there you are. Schools have integrated mindfulness into their curriculum. Inspired by Kabat-Zinn's approach, hospitals have introduced mindfulness exercises in their patient care programs to aid healing and recovery. The beauty of this book lies in its simplicity and accessibility. It's not about grand revelations or complicated techniques. It's about the here and now, the breath that you're taking, the moment that you're living. It's about finding peace amidst the chaos, calm amidst the storm. The book doesn't promise an easy journey. Mindfulness, as Kabat-Zinn emphasizes, is a practice, a continual process of coming back to the present moment. It's not a quick fix, but a path to a richer, more fulfilling life. The readers of Wherever You Go, There You Are come from all walks of life, each with their unique stories, struggles and triumphs. Yet they share a common thread, a journey towards mindfulness, guided by the wisdom in these pages. They describe how the book helped them find calm in the chaos of daily life and provided them with tools to remain grounded. And that, in itself, is a testament to the enduring impact of Kabat-Zinn's seminal work. While this book has reached many and is highly praised, some critics find it somewhat repetitive. The chapters often circle back to similar themes and ideas, and some readers might find this tedious. However, upon closer inspection, this repetition seems to be a deliberate choice by the author. Kabat-Zinn is emphasizing the importance of revisiting, reinforcing, and deepening one's understanding of mindfulness. It's almost as if the book itself is a mindfulness exercise, inviting you to return to the same concepts again and again, each time with a fresh perspective. Another critique of the book is its lack of a structured step-by-step -step program to follow. Some readers might have preferred a more defined path to mindfulness, complete with daily routines and specific exercises. Instead, Kabat-Zinn opts to provide a collection of loosely connected insights, reflections and exercises that readers are free to explore at their own pace and in their own way. This approach might feel unsatisfying to those seeking a more structured guide. However, this lack of structure is not necessarily a weakness. In fact, it can be seen as a strength. Kabat-Zinn's approach reflects the very nature of mindfulness. It's not a linear journey with a clear beginning, middle and end. Instead, it's a continuous process of exploring and understanding one's own mind moment by moment. The book's format mirrors this process, offering readers the freedom to engage with the material in a way that suits them best. While the book's simplicity is one of its greatest strengths, some might argue it's too simplistic, lacking depth in certain areas. For instance, some readers might wish for more discussion on the challenges of maintaining a regular mindfulness practice or dealing with difficult emotions. However, Kabat-Zinn seems to have intentionally kept the content light and accessible, focusing on the essence of mindfulness rather than delving into every possible complication. Finally, there is a critique that the book's teachings might not resonate with everyone, especially those from different cultural or philosophical backgrounds. Kabat-Zinn's approach to mindfulness is largely secular, drawing from Buddhist principles but stripping them of their religious context. This might not appeal to everyone, particularly those seeking a more spiritual or religious approach to mindfulness. In conclusion, wherever you go, there you are, is not without its criticisms. It's repetitive, lacks a structured program, might be seen as too simplistic, and its secular approach might not resonate with everyone. However, these perceived weaknesses can also be interpreted as strengths, reflecting the very essence of mindfulness practice. Repetition, freedom from rigid structures, simplicity and openness to diverse perspectives. However, this openness is also a strength.